Alrighty, here we go again. I'm going to do a video lesson for Eric Hughes, who is on my Patreon and is in Spin and Throw Facebook group. And uh, Mr. Hughes, or Dr. Hughes, I don't know if he's a doctor, but um, Mr. Hughes is looking pretty good already. I would have liked to have seen a video of him before he ever even started the Spin and Throw journey. Because he's already pretty darn far along the way. I'm going to have to really dig in on this guy. He's uh, he's already doing quite well. I'm very impressed. He looks like a good athlete. If you um, listen to the sound, he's getting a really good pop <clears throat> every time he lets go of the disc. Now I'm going to show you how you can pick up some distance for sure. And it's not from throwing harder or anything. But we'll see. I'll show you. I also have Paige Pierce here that we're going to use as the slow motion model because I really can't find a better one than Paige Pierce as far as I'm concerned. And he's, he's certainly very close. You're going to see for yourself. All right, so here we go full speed. You can see that is not bad. Boom. Nice little pop. Good follow through. Got a nice quick little upright motion. Keeping his head so nicely centered. Just straight up and down. That is nice. Let's go back. Going back. I won't go forward. Bad me. Okay. Going back. Going back. Got a heck of a good foot pivot. I wish mine was that good. Okay. Now, <clears throat> as I go back and forth, you spinning throwers, what are we looking for? You couldn't see it when he was going fast. You have to slow it down to see it. There's a few things going on here. I'm not going to speak yet and let everybody kind of kind of get it in their own mind what they're seeing and see if we agree. Okay. All right. What are we seeing? Now, first of all, I already said this is pretty darn good i mean i get some people who are having to totally rebuild he's got many of the elements you can see he's breaking down a little bit there okay that position is very interesting and then here's the next frame boom now <clears throat> okay so right off the bat now i'm going to skip the arm part and we're going to go do the body part first. All right. So. He's trying to stay up on his toes. That's good. He's not falling to his heel. I'd say you're a little bit wide, but not bad. Obviously, he's getting through the shot. He's getting, his, he's getting stepped over. He's not pushing. But at the same time, he's not kicking either. It's not really a kick. Okay, so we'll back up page. Here we go. Now this is in a lot slower motion. So as she's falling forward, okay, so now we're starting into the fall forward, striding, pulling the disc into her chest or out of her chest, and the upper body is going backwards and the lower body is going forwards. Okay, but what starts the spin? She's got her foot. She's on her t on her ball of her foot, and her heel's basically off the ground because she's not going to land on that heel because this hip's going this way. So what would be that doesn't help you any to do that. So striding forward, upper body momentum's going backwards. Lower body momentum is going forwards. 
this is in super duper slow and foot's almost ready to hit the ground getting close to ready to hit the ground and a couple inches from the ground as soon as that toe touches it's going to go just barely and then right there there it starts okay so there's the kick starting Now see how she keeps this knee close to this knee? Okay. See that? This is something we've we've gone over several times. I could keep, you know, going over the same ground, but this is the knee drop and the hip firing. I think there's I think more people talk about the knee drop because you can see it. But actually what this is is a rotation of the entire left side, which is start started by the knee. So the knee rotates, doesn't drop as much as it rotates. This is a rotation and it's going to, that swing of the knee around in front of this knee, ultimately, brings this hip around. Okay, so let's go back to Mr. Hughes and see where his knee is. His knee is never kicked at any point. Just saying. Goes from standing on it, gets up on it good. It gets wound up really well. I'm digging that. He's got to move back. He's leaving the disc kind of in place and then stepping forward with his body, which is essentially the same thing. Kind of like a Will Schusterix kind of thing. Okay. But that knee is actually going this way. When it should already be starting this way. The rotation of the left side for a right-handed thrower. So there is actually no rotation. It kind of slides in behind the other leg like a bowler. Which I think other people teach that. But actually, look, it just goes straight up. There's not actually any hip firing to lead. Now he's got his shoulders in a great position. If his hips had already fired... And this knee was right about here. Man, this would be money. That is some great positions. Just the, the He's actually dragging his trailing side. So his trailing side is going backwards. His knee is kind of trying to go forward. But it should have gone around and closer to this knee. Around and close to that knee. Okay. Okay. And it does finally fold up. But... There's a lot more gas left in the tank here, people. Okay, so this this versus this. Okay, this is a rotated, her thigh has rotated, and this knee is going to start accelerating this way, which will pull the entire upper body with her, and her that will put her lower body ahead of her upper body, which it already significantly is. She's almost facing this way with her hips and her shoulders are almost completely still closed, 90 degrees. You get some separation like that, you got a little back flexibility. I think Mr. Hughes will be just fine, actually. I think he's, uh... let's watch that again. What speed are we in? Let's put that on quarter speed. Here we go. See, boy, we were so close. We're starting into it. Just beautiful. Man, that's a good, man, I would, wow, that's a good wind up right there. If by now this was already getting ready to fire, seize, landed on this heel, there's no real intent to, to get this going this way. It's really just sitting there. And then he does fire his torso, but he's not using his hips to do it. Again, he's got kind of a Will Schuster thing going. I can work with that. That's really good. That's a, um, oh, doggone it. Um, who's the, he's got kind of the same look of, uh, oh, so bad with names. Um, they're talking on the forum this morning, the two brothers that used to throw distance. Very upright throwers. I'm, somebody in the comments will say, it's so-and-so. 
Okay, here we go. Knees are further apart when they should be getting closer together. Okay. There you go. That's a knee getting closer to the other knee. And look at the rotation. Let's do that again. I, I hope people are really starting to see this. I mean, that's massive hip rotation, which is not a push, by the way. I don't know why that's so controversial, but it is. It is a spin of the back side, the left side. Boom. Okay, so that knee rotated around, and yes, it drops and gets close to the other knee. Essentially, her knees are very close together, and we have very far apart. Okay, so I beat that to death. I'm going to go on to the next piece. Okay. I'd rather work on the knee first, but I'm going to go ahead and say what the next thing is. This is a true scoop. This is scooping. Okay, so the disc is up here. This is too high. I would like to see this disc down here just below the nipples and actually start from a low position if anything the arm would be lower to start and go to high uh, this is something that people used to say and i didn't understand it and i i absolutely believe it's true because it promotes the proper wrist rotation so what this does when you do it this way when you go from here see the disc is here and if we were to go in reverse, where's that disc nose going up relative to his wrist? It's going up. So now we're going to turn that 180 as he throws it out. And now it's nose up. I like a lot. That is a lot of nose up. He's got, I mean, he's throwing putter here. He's probably got 50 more feet of putter distance. Easy. If this started out nose down. And the way to do that um, is to, he's already got his head stopped. That's outstanding. He's already got his spine stopped, nice and vertical. I mean, that's just beautiful. And he's trying to get the disc tucked, but his tuck is absolutely pretty high. If I would like to see the push out position Okay, that's actually good. If he were to take it from here and go straight into his below his pec, that would be perfect. But he doesn't. Takes it way up here. He's got it way up there. I think I do that too. I'm not sure. I I have to work on that all the time so that I can get the disc nose down by working my arm upward if anything, slightly upward, it forces you to throw the back of the disc upward and get the nose down. What this does is make him curl under. This is what I call curling under. He's trapped a little bit because he's gone up here. Now he's curled under. The disc is caught behind his own wrist. Go to the next frame and pow. His, see how the thumb went under? It went this way, this way. Paige Pierce's goes this way. It goes from, he's rotating his wrist clock counterclockwise, and all the good players rotate their wrist slightly clockwise. And as a result, that disc is, I don't know, what is that, 15, 20 degrees nose up? That's a lot of speed. You're wasting a lot of speed. That's so much drag that hits the bottom of the disc immediately. And that is a lot of distance. Um, one of my best students, he picked up a hundred feet, not a joke, unlearning this. This is a, this is a real thing. This is worth, not to mention the fact this is definitely affecting your disc selection. You're having to throw discs. Um, once you get the nose down, all of a sudden the discs will start to fly the way they're intended. So we'll back up again. Went forward again. I'm glad I'm not driving a car. All right, so from there, I'd like to see this 
down here. Maybe like split your bicep so we can get, I don't mind the elbow being up, but if you start low, you can't do that. It's just impossible. If you were down here and went to there, you'd be throwing the disc straight up in the air. But it looks like there may be some leftover from you at one time coming over the top and throwing your spine, which is where that comes from. If you have your spine way down here to keep from throwing it in the dirt, you have to curl under and flip the nose up and rotate your thumb under counter counterclockwise. Push the thumb down and that pops the nose up even more. Okay. All right. Really good. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think that's enough for a first lesson. Uh, he is one of my premium Patreon subscribers. And, you know, I'm going to work with him until we're satisfied. And I bet it doesn't take that long if he does the drills. The next thing would be to practice without a disc. And I'm going to make him do some no disc practice and send me videos. So that'll be the next step. Join my Patreon, patreon.com, spin and throw. The Facebook group is spin and throw disc golf. And I will catch you next time. Thank you. This is Brad.